Next up is electrical and electronics repairers. Think of almost like a maintenance electrician, in a, especially a powerhouse or a substation, things like that. Now, the median income for this job is $96,000, but the 75th percentile earn $107,000, so you're into the six figures here. Now, these guys diagnose, fix, and maintain equipment like motors, uh, control systems, circuit boards, communications gear, stuff like that. They're gonna use meters and oscilloscopes and schematics to track down faults and replace components and stuff, calibrate systems. You'll find these guys in factories, power plants, hospitals, telecom sites, they basically keep critical equipment running safely and reliably. Now, unlike a typical electrician or lineman, a lot of these guys are dealing with small motor controls and things like that. Motor controls is often just a small segment of what we learn in an electrical school, but there are a lot of people who just take to that side of it and really enjoy working with relays and stuff like that. That's really where these guys can make a lot of money, especially if you're working with things like programmable load controllers, things with automation. You're the guy that they call, or girl, when something isn't working and they're losing money every time that that machine isn't running. So you can make a lot of money doing this. Now, how to get in? You have to start with some post-secondary training and you can get this through the military or you can also get it through various community colleges and places like that. You're gonna wanna look for jobs like utility substation trainee or relay trainee or apprenticeship openings, things like that. This is one where an associate degree and this kind of stuff could definitely help, but if you get a certificate, that can be just as good. And then you're gonna have structured on the job training to sort of bring you up to speed. And once you're hired, you can level up by getting different credentials like NIDA technician or certified electronics technician to stand out for relay testing and substation maintenance roles that pay really well. Now the pros, this job can be less physically demanding than most electrical jobs. Also, if you really like problem solving, that's probably what you're doing pretty much all day. And there's also a very high skill ceiling. So when you get in and you start learning stuff, you can become almost irreplaceable pretty quickly, especially if you're sharp. Now the cons, there are definitely fewer openings for these types of jobs. Where a building could take 50 electricians, usually one or two or three people are required for this type of job. There's also a ton of paperwork and understanding schematics. This is really a job that borders electrical engineering kind of stuff without being an engineer. So you have to like looking at schematics and understanding motor controls. It's sort of a different way of thinking, but some people really take to that. 